Any time is a good time to work on yourself, but towards the beginning of a new year can feel like a fresh start and a perfect opportunity to start making big changes. If you haven't thought about any specific goals or maybe your new year's resolution has fell through by now, now is a great time to make some bigger decisions. There are so many things you can do to improve yourself this year, and I've got a checklist of things you can do to work on yourself to be better by the end of 2018. The first five are mindsets and attitudes that you can work on, but the last two are tactical things that you can actually go out and practically do. Number one, Gratitude. In an average day, you probably say thank you at least once, but how much gratitude do you actually feel saying it? If you don't take the time to feel thankful every day, it's time to start. There have been so many studies done on the connections between gratitude and well-being, and the findings are really amazing. People who are grateful tend to feel fewer toxic emotions like anger, jealousy, and regret. They feel healthier, they have less pain, and they sleep better, and they have the best self-esteem. Those are just some major benefits to feeling thankful. And becoming someone who feels gratitude every day is pretty easy change to make. It can be as simple as making the decision to feel gratitude every day and consciously looking for things in your life that you appreciate. If you go that route, it's handy to use something as a reminder that prompts you to take a minute for an exercise in gratitude. It can be an object on your desk, a bracelet, or something on your phone screen. Just make sure it's something that you're bound to glance at periodically throughout the day. In time, it'll become a habit and you won't need the reminder to feel gratitude anymore. Now, if you like more structured exercises, you can start a gratitude journal instead. Keep a notebook or download a journal app and take a few minutes once or twice a day to write down a few things that you're grateful for. These can be big things like family and friends or small things like having a few extra minutes to grab coffee before work. Anything you can think of is great. The key is that you don't just say that you're thankful for them. You need to take a moment and really feel appreciation for them. Thoughts are fleeting, but the feelings hang around. You'll notice that it's actually pretty enjoyable to do too. The feeling of gratitude as a way of overtaking negative emotions. Number two on our self-improvement list is mindfulness. In a similar vein, being more mindful is a great goal to have. It's another change in your perspective or thought process and it can really change your mental health for the better. Mindfulness is all about being more conscious of the present moment. Your awareness should be on what you're doing most of the time, where you are and how you're feeling instead of on things that are stressing you out. Studies on mindfulness have shown that it improves mood, reduces stress and anxiety, lessens depressive symptoms and improves general health among many other benefits to introduce mindfulness into your routine you'll probably need some kind of prompt like the ones mentioned before for learning gratitude when you see your prompt take a moment to focus on the present you can also use bookends this is something I do basically creating a mindfulness habit in the morning right after you wake up and at night right before you go to bed notice the pace of your breathing if you're holding something notice the texture and the weight of it notice what the space you're in sounds like without focusing too much on any particular sound this exercise doesn't have to be any longer than a minute but it should be done a few times throughout the day. Once you get used to taking a minute here and there to feel mindful, you won't need a prompt anymore. You'll start finding opportunities in your day for it, like when you're waiting in line, washing dishes, or anytime you're feeling anxious or even stressed. If you like your new mindfulness exercise, consider adding 15 to 20 minutes of mindfulness meditation into your daily routine. It will boost the positive effects since you'll be dedicating more time to mindfulness. Let's get on to number three, <laughs> organization. Some of you really struggle with this. If you're already obsessed with your planner and have printed labels on every jar in your pantry, you probably don't need organizational skills on your checklist. But chances are, like most people, you could stand to organize your life more effectively. Most people forget an appointment now and then or misplace things here and there, and it's really frustrating, especially for me when it happens. Organization can prevent those things from happening and offer some great perks to your life. So let's start by organizing your home. It's a simple thing to do, and once it's done, it doesn't require much upkeep to keep it that way. When things are organized, they're easier to find when you need them, which will save you a lot of time in the long run, and eliminate the annoyance of trying to find something that's misplaced. Not to mention that an organized space is often a tidy space, which feels good to be in and look at when people come over. Organization isn't just about having a place for everything, and having everything in its place though. Keeping track of your commitments and planning your schedule effectively is another aspect of organization, and it's so important for success. So get yourself a calendar, a calendar app, or a planner, and start filling in all all of your appointments, deadlines, and events, along with anything else that you might have to do to prepare for them. Check your calendar every day so that you know what needs to be doing and what's coming up. This can greatly contribute to success at work or school or in your life in general and make you more reliable for your friends and family. I personally use a whiteboard for my calendar and to plan my goals. Number four is something that I probably need to work on, assertiveness. Working on being more assertive should definitely be part of your 2018 checklist. Many people don't feel comfortable standing up for themselves, but it's important to speak up so that your needs are met and 
and not being overlooked. Being assertive can impact your life in such significant ways. When you're assertive in relationships, you're more likely to have your needs met because you make a point of telling your friends, family, and even romantic partners what you need and you make it clear that your needs are important. When you're assertive at work, you don't let your boss or coworkers take advantage of you and you make it known when you want a promotion or a raise, which can make it more likely to happen. It's amazing how your life can change when you advocate yourself in a firm but polite way. Often, the primary obstacle of becoming more assertive is something called self-worth. If you don't believe you deserve what you want, you're going to have a hard time asking for it. So the first thing you should do is start by identifying things about yourself that you do like. Work on your self-esteem and learn to love yourself. As you do, start voicing your opinions more. And from there, share your feelings and your needs as the situation comes up. Remember, opinions are not necessarily facts. It's a process and it can be a very tough one if you're used to accommodating others and ignoring your own needs. But take small steps and by the end of the year, you'll be so much easier to speak out. Honestly, you could even start in your gratitude journal by writing some things about yourself that you appreciate. Number five is overcoming fears. Most people are afraid of something, and for a lot of people, those fears can impact them in big ways. If you've got fears that are getting in your way of life, of becoming more successful, this is the year to get over them. We all know that it's easier said than done, but if fear is holding you back, why not at least try to move past it? It might sound cliche, but the best way to get over a fear is to face it. I've talked about this before. Exposure and something else called response prevention therapy, also called systematic desensitization, is a great method to use. It involves slowly exposing to what you're afraid of, monitoring the reaction, letting the anxiety subside, and then repeating the process again. For example, let's say you're afraid of traveling, and even leaving the city makes you panic. This could prevent you from going on vacations and exploring and adventuring places that you've never been to before. It could stunt your growth, your business growth, your career growth, even growth in your friends' and family's lives. So first, you might want to go to the other end of a town, maybe to a restaurant or a park that you've never been before but is pretty far away from where you live. Feel the anxiety and sit until it starts to fade a little bit. You can do this multiple times until you're used to it if necessary. Then, in the next step, you could go to the next town over, then on a short day trip, then an overnight trip. Eventually, your travel anxiety should lessen as you experience being further from home and start to recognize that it's safe. This can be done for so many different different fears like spiders and snakes and even skydiving. If your fear is more abstract like a fear of a commitment or getting sick, try seeking a therapist. Talking with a professional can help you really dig into the root of the fear so that you can work through it. It's hard to use exposure for these kinds of fears, but it's still possible to get over them and there's no better time than right now. Remember I said the first five were more attitudes and the last two were practical? Well, number six is books. Books will give you ideas that you can tangibly apply to your life that make the changes that you want. You can get ideas from other people, but the stories in books and the author's experiences and perspectives will help give you that perspective to make better decisions in life. You won't get very far if you're not reading a lot, and honestly, I think without reading at all, you won't make any major progressions. So read some books in your industry, because experts agree that you can become more knowledgeable than 90% of your field. You can become in the top 10% of your field just by reading four books on the topic. Imagine if you consumed a book a week in your industry. You'll quickly reach the top of the mountain of people in your field. For me, reading over 300 books last year was one of the best experiments I've ever done. I learned so much from it, and it's shown in my personal life, my business life, and all of my relationships. This is why I'm highly recommending reading books in 2018 and in many years beyond, because there's never been a time where I finished a book and I went, you know what, that book didn't really add value to my life. I wish I could go back and not read that one. They all added value in some way or another, and I plan on reading just as much, if not more, this year. Number seven, and actually this video's sponsor, is one of my favorite services ever. Skillshare is a website where you can sign up to learn new skills by watching a ton of courses on almost any topic you could think of. One of the best ways to learn, obviously, is by learning from an expert who has been refining their techniques for years. From sales, to dating, to body language, even technical skills like watercolor, graphic design, and DSLR photography tutorials. There's over 17,000 courses on Skillshare at the moment, and the price point is, well, in my opinion, one of these courses is worth way more than the monthly fee that they charge. A premium membership costs less than $10 per month if you pay annually. I would be honored if you guys signed up below using my own personal link in the description. And right now, you can sign up for $0.99 and get a two-month trial. And please, make this year the best year of your life. You guys know I'm picky with my sponsorships and always transparent. I have been using Skillshare for over three months now to boost my learning potential, and some of these courses should be priced at least $300 alone. Two courses have been especially helpful. How to design a sales funnel that converts has taught me a lot of foundational things, and I'm also trying to up my Instagram game in the next couple months. So I'm currently taking a course called Instagram Marketing 300 Real Followers a Day to learn the foundations of growing my Instagram through taking a course. Anyways, I hope you crush this year, and I really hope this channel contributes to that. Thank you guys so much for watching.